Canadians' pro-immigrant uh, orientation is a product of favorable geography and the sense that there is a deliberate and controlled immigration policy that has a particular design, but it's more than that. It's also about integration, multiculturalism, and citizenship. And multiculturalism in particular is really interesting because when Canadians are asked what are the most important uh, elements to Canadian national identity, multiculturalism is named by over half of Canadians, 54%, as very important symbol of Canadian national identity. This is actually more than hockey, which is someone who grew up in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, and has gone to many hockey games, can tell you, is really quite a big deal. Uh, other elements that make Canadians proud are things such as the Canadian flag, the red maple leaf, the Charter of Rights and Freedoms, and all of these things, the flag, the charter, and multiculturalism, are all things that did not exist uh, right after World War II. So this is part and parcel of recreating national identity in Canada. So in Canada, multiculturalism means integration through recognition and accommodation of cultural difference. And I want to underscore this because multiculturalism can mean a lot of different things to a lot of different people. It is not the case that the Canadian version of multiculturalism is separate cultural communities that don't interact, like paintings in an art gallery that are separate and apart. Uh, often the metaphor used in Canada is of a multicultural mosaic, so that each tile has its own distinctiveness, its unique characteristics, but you need them all in order to make the unified picture. As part of multiculturalism, we see policies that include both public funding for community-based organizations, we see uh, integration of multicultural voices in educational curricula, and we see symbolic discourse in all different sectors of society, including the very highest political sectors, where that is celebrated as part and parcel of being Canadian. And this is done by political elites both within Canada, but also when they go abroad in international fora. So this tells uh, immigrants that they are part of the country, but it also reminds those born in Canada who have been in Canada for multiple generations that this is part of their identity and their society. To give you a sense of how it might feel different to live in a country where you have this public affirmation of diversity, let me give you the example of one of the Portuguese immigrants that I interviewed in Massachusetts. Now, this gentleman, who I'm going to call Joe, was interesting because he had lived both in Toronto and in Massachusetts. So he'd experienced what it was like to be an immigrant in Canada and the United States. And I asked him which place he preferred and why. And he answered in the following way. I like the way, talking about Canada, I like the way the government runs things. I guess the great support, the multicultural stuff, the social assistance. We pay a lot of tax, that's true. But the great concern of government, the help for the citizens themselves. So there's a lot wrapped up in what Joe is saying. It's not just about multiculturalism. It also has to do with public benefits and other things that governments do to perhaps show people that they care. But for Joe, at least, multiculturalism, and for him it was just the multicultural stuff, but that was significant enough that he felt that government was concerned about him. The way he talked about it was very different from another Portuguese immigrant who I call Manuela. She lived in Cambridge, Massachusetts, which is just outside of Boston. And when I asked her about her experience living in the United States, she said the following. But they, the government, don't know how it is. You can't say, sir, sir, send people that care about the immigrants because they are the people who can't speak up. There is nowhere to complain to and we can't complain. So you can hear this sense of uh, isolation or at least exclusion from the body politic. And Manuela was a citizen. But because the public discourse is quite different, especially at the national level, she felt more excluded.